Welcome back everyone, this will be my full Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty and Avengers 6 Secret Wars video with all the Marvel Phase 5 and Marvel Phase 6 movies and Disney Plus series that they put on the schedule. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, obviously this is a really huge deal. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course I'll be doing videos for all this stuff, all the episodes they drop, all the movies that they drop. It's gonna be awesome, I'm so happy that they announced all this stuff. Like clearly they wanted to remind you like, oh yeah, we have a direction we're headed in. I think we all knew that they were building up to a version of Secret Wars, but now we have a clear answer as to what most of this is going to be. There were a couple movies and a couple Disney Plus series that they've already announced but didn't put on the official schedules here on the board, and there were a couple blank mystery movie dates and Disney Plus mystery dates that they'll mostly announce at D23 later this year. Like, if you can believe it, they were holding back on some announcements, like, we'll hold some secrets back until D23 because that's when we're really gonna announce some big stuff. We'll get a lot more trailers and a lot more promos for the upcoming stuff during that, and that's gonna happen in September. But we already know what some of those mystery movies and mystery series are going to be, so I'll talk about those later in the video. The real big thing is Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, and Avengers 6 Secret Wars. Them using the teaser to confirm what their grand plan is for the next saga of Marvel movies, Phase 4, Phase 5, and Phase 6, and they're just calling it the Multiverse Saga. Like Phase 1, Phase 2, and Phase 3 were the Infinity Saga, now it's the Multiverse Saga. I was calling it the Secret War Saga before this, but the Multiverse Saga works well too. Kevin Feige said the reason why this saga is happening so quickly compared to how long it took to get through all of the Marvel Phase 1, Phase 2, and Phase 3 movies is just because they didn't have the Marvel Disney Plus series before, so there was just way less time for them to spend telling the story during those earlier years. Like, early on, they only had like one, two movies per year, now they have like three or four movies per year, and like three or four Disney Plus series minimum. So it'll be like this when we get to Marvel Phase 7, Phase 8, Phase 9, whatever they call the phases after Phase 6. Who knows if we'll get to like Phase 25 and they'll just start calling it something different. Like will they call it Phase 100 when we're all in our 90s? The bigger announcement I think is that they plan, at least right now, on releasing two giant Avengers movies, Avengers 5, Avengers 6, in the same calendar year. Like they're going full Matrix with it. If you don't remember the classic Matrix movies or you didn't see those in theaters, they did the exact same thing with the Matrix sequels, just waiting a couple months between like the giant sequels. What I'm expecting is that we'll get a couple years down the road and they'll just say, oh, you know, by the way, we've decided to push Avengers 6 Secret Wars to the following spring and it'll be just like the way that they released Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame and it'll be like one calendar year between the movies. But the reason why they want to have them so close together is because they're doing the exact same thing that they did with the story of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Like it's one giant Avengers story meant to bookend an entire saga of movies, but the stories of each of the movies is a little bit different, so they give them different titles like it's not part one and part two, and they release them relatively close together and they'll just break the story in half with a giant cliffhanger like they did with Infinity War. During Infinity War, it was the snap. This time, it's gonna be like the time runs out scenario where like the rest of the multiverse just collapses on itself and you have Battle World at the end of the film. So the whole idea is that at the end of Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, the new Avengers team, whoever the new roster is going to be, winds up losing again, like you have a kind of a downer ending as they head into Battle World. And they'll have a similar moment like they had in the comics with Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom where Doom became God Emperor Doom and combined all the remnants of the remaining universes into a single universe with a single world and that was Battle World. In early theory, Avengers 6 will probably begin with all the characters from a bunch of different universes like the Fox Marvel movies, every character you could possibly imagine coming back as a version of their character. Waking up on Battle World, believing that the universe that they now exist in, this Battle World scenario, is the way that things have always been, with only a couple of the characters remembering the multiverse that came before. But the big change here, I think we're all expecting because of the way they announced all these movies and because Kevin Feige said that Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror's variants of Kang the Conqueror will be such a big character during all this, is that instead a lot of this story turning around God Emperor Doom pulling all the strings during Secret Wars, it'll be a version of Jonathan Major's King the Conqueror. And he's kind of like the next version of Thanos, where like you have versions of Thanos in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, so the story is all about them versus Thanos, but in both movies it's like slightly different versions of Thanos. So if you're wondering who the next Thanos was going to be, a lot of you predicted that it would be Kang, you are right, pat yourselves on the back. What's going on with Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty though is that they'll probably do a version of the Kang War from the comics with some minor changes just so that everything fits with the continuity that they've done in the previous Marvel movies. Like the roster of new Avengers will be a little bit different based on what they've set up in the movie so far. 
Based on the Marvel Phase 5 schedule and the way they transition to Marvel Phase 6 and when everything is coming out, they'll probably tease that new Avengers team coming together during Captain America 4, New World Order. Like they'll do it as a mini Avengers crossover movie, kind of like Civil War with a bunch of Avengers in it, and they'll just tease them all forming a new team of Avengers at the end of that. And then over the course of Marvel Phase 6, we'll slowly see that team actually come together so that by the time you get to the end of Marvel Phase 6, you have the new Avengers team, Kang does something big, and you head into Avengers 5. If you haven't read that newer version of Kang War in the comics, it happened around the same time that the newer Secret Wars also happened. It was a brand new Avengers roster with some of the versions on that team being characters that we just met in Marvel Phase 4. Now, like I said, the roster won't be the exact same as it was in the comics, but it'll be pretty close. And it was them fighting different versions of Kang from across his timeline in the past, the present, the future. In the Loki finale, He Who Remains Kang teased that they'd meet many of his variants from across different timelines, some of them with different names. He said that he himself had also been called many different names across time. That was meant to be a reference to the different comic book versions of the character like Rama Tut, who we got Easter eggs for during the Loki series and Loki season one, the Scarlet Centurion, Kang the Conqueror, Immortus, now add He Who Remains to that list because they used to be two different characters in the comics, but they kind of combined them into the same character during the Loki finale. There's even a version of Iron Lad that they haven't introduced yet, who's basically like a child version of Kang. He becomes someone called Kid Immortus, who's like another version of the character. So there are many, many, many versions of him we'll probably see in future Marvel movies. Ant-Man 3 is like the next big place because we'll see a version of Kang the Conqueror in that. And then again during Loki Season 2. And what'll happen during Avengers 5 is they'll also probably pay off a bigger version of the Kang Multiverse War that they kept talking about during the Loki series, but you didn't actually see it happen. Kevin Feige teased that when they introduced that concept of the Multiverse War in the Loki series, and Sylvie killed He Who Remains, unleashing the other Kang variants in the second Kang Multiverse War, like it all started happening again, that was meant to be the beginning of everything that they're culminating with Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. So it's all connected. Classic Marvel line. And if it wasn't clear, the version of Secret Wars that they'll do during Avengers 6 will be a combination of the newer Secret Wars with some changes, like I said, so that it fits with all the characters that they've set up in the current Marvel movies. It won't be exactly like it was in the comics, but they'll also probably include some Easter eggs for the classic 80s version of Secret Wars, which was a completely different storyline, but they actually did a version of that during the 90s Spider-Man the Animated Series. Great series, but it was very different from the newer version that they'll probably be basing the movie on. Right now as we're talking, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is the end of Marvel Phase 4, Ant-Man 3 Quantum Mania is the beginning of Marvel Phase 5. I literally just did an Ant-Man 3 trailer video for all the footage they released at Comic-Con, so I'll add a link for that at the end of this and in the description below so you can watch it again. It features Ant-Man versus a version of Kang the Conqueror. We'll also see a version of Kang during Loki Season 2 that same year. Maybe different variants of Kang in both projects, but we'll see, like I said. The only things that they left off the schedule here in Marvel Phase 5 is What If Season 2, that's happening around the same time that Ant-Man 3 is coming out. There's also that Spider-Man Freshman Year series that they announced that's coming out during Marvel Phase 5 that they didn't put on the board here. And yes, Armor Wars is still coming out, but they didn't put it on the Marvel Phase 5 or Marvel Phase 6 schedule. That's probably just because they're waiting to figure out a release date. It's pretty early in development. It will probably fall during Marvel Phase 6 during one of these mystery dates. The biggest announcements of Marvel Phase 5, in my opinion, are the new Daredevil Born Again series, which we knew was eventually going to happen. We just didn't know when or how they were going to do it. They also confirmed that's going to have 18 episodes. Like we just saw him in the She-Hulk trailer. That's like the next step in him coming back into this new revival series. The other big confirmation is that Thunderbolts is going to be the end of Marvel Phase 5. That means they'll also probably tease the Thunderbolts coming together during Captain America 4. The beginning of Marvel Phase 6 is the brand new Fantastic Four movie, and notice how the logo for Avengers 5 King Dynasty is the same blue color as the Fantastic Four logo, and it's the same blue color that you see coming off of Kang's time travel technology in the Ant-Man 3 trailer inside the Quantum Realm. That's no coincidence, because there is a huge connection between the Fantastic Four and Kang. Kang's original name, as you'll remember, is Nathaniel Richards. He was named after Reed Richards' father, so Kang and Reed Richards are like very, very distantly related. The other reason for the blue coloring is that it also confirms that both of them are using quantum energy to power their portal technology, and in Kang's case, his time travel technology. Which makes sense, I was talking about this back when Loki Season 1 came out, and again when we saw John Krasinski's Reed Richards using the blue portal technology in Doctor Strange 2. Like, they're just confirming that connection now. The reason why the Avengers 6 Secret Wars logo looks so different, looks black, 
basically, is because it's meant to represent the void of nothingness, like of all reality collapsing, that they exist in after the last incursions and after the multiverse basically dies. Like the Avengers lose, all of reality collapses except for this one universe with this one world in that universe called Battleworld. The whole thing with the Thor Love and Thunder post credit scene teasing Hercules going after Thor seems like it's setting up a version of War of the Realms which is sort of like a god tier version of Avengers Endgame with like all the gods going at each other. I'm really hoping that they don't try to shoehorn that in and also do it during Secret Wars and they do it as just like a completely separate thing because it is totally different from what happens during Secret Wars. As for all the mystery dates in Marvel Phase 6, we already know what most of these will be. I already said Armor Wars is coming out in Phase 6. They have the Wonder Man series, there's an Okoye series, there's a separate Wakanda Disney Plus series, there's a Nova series they just announced. We know about Deadpool 3 coming out, Shang-Chi 2 has already been confirmed with the same director, Daniel Cretton. He's also the person who's going to direct Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, but they did confirm that they'd have a completely different director for Avengers 6 Secret Wars and the Russo said that it probably would not be them. We'll see if they pick Ryan Coogler or one of the other new directors that comes along during Marvel Phase 5. We also know they have Spider-Man 4 coming with Tom Holland. There's also the new X-Men movie they announced, which is currently just called The Mutants. So that's at least seven projects and there are eight empty slots in Marvel Phase 6. So that last remaining slot might wind up being Doctor Strange 3. But like any of those Marvel Disney Plus series that are early in development could get pushed to Marvel Phase 7. Even the X-Men movie could get pushed to Marvel Phase 7. But Kevin Feige said he didn't want to wait that long for X-Men inside the MCU. I'll do more videos as we get more Easter eggs for those in the upcoming series. Like anytime that Kang shows up in a project, we'll probably be talking about this. Like Loki Season 2 episodes and during Ant-Man 3, there's still a bunch of announcements and stuff that I'm doing videos for, so I'll try to get those out as fast as possible. There's a couple big trailers too, so make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer video and Easter eggs, and click here for my Ant-Man 3 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.